And welcome back to Meeting of the Minds. Today, I'm here with the great Gene Peluso. So we got two genes on the call, but this is the head coach of Stevens Institute of Technology. Gene, thank you for joining us. Um, my pleasure. Glad, I'm glad to be here. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. All right, so we'll kick it right in gear. Talk about some of your main coaching philosophies. Yeah, you know, we're just, you know, one of the things that we, you know, spend a lot of time is kind of, you know, the, the focus of the, not just the physical aspect of the game, but, you know, certainly the mental aspect of the game. And, you know, I think that, you know, we're pretty good and work pretty hard with our student athletes to really to, to create a culture that's, you know, exciting. You know, we always say that we want lacrosse to be the best, you know, couple hours of their day, um, you know, but with kind of a mindset of hard work, you know, and, you know, and, and goal setting and, 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 and doing the things that you need to do, obviously in, in athletics, college athletics, and really in any, any world out there, but, um, but also taking care of the process. You know, we talk a lot about our philosophy at Stevens and, you know, for years, um, this is my 12th year of, is, you know, focusing on the process is, is more important than focusing on the outcome, you know, and, and I think that, our guys do a very good job of that. I do think it's challenging at times at a place like Stevens. And, and I know you've had coach Fabio on the wrestling coach and, um, and Stevens from Russ Rogers, our athletic director down to all the programs are, are, are winners. You know, the, the student athletes are focused and, you know, and, you know, they are very outcome, uh, you know, pro, pro, outcome kind of related. They, they, they want the best outcome, the student athletes, but, sometimes we have to take a step back and kind of focus on how to get there, you know? So a lot of what we do is, is around those, you know, lines, uh, you know, along those lines where we're trying to make sure that the, the guys are enjoying the process, but also, you know, not, not focusing too much on what that final outcome is going to be. Cause you know, we feel like if you take care of the process, the, the rest will take care of itself. Absolutely. It's such a fine line that balance. I mean, in order to get into Stevens, you have to be a you know, tremendous student, tremendous athlete, both. So they're already operating at a very high level and they are focused on getting those outcomes, but they have to then balance that with taking care of what they can control. Absolutely. And, and that's actually one of our main challenges is this perfectionist kind of mentality. You know, we get guys at Stevens that never got under a 4.0, you know, GPA and, and have been their, their captains or their go-to guys on the lacrosse field. And, and, and sometimes we have to explain to guys that it's okay to, to fail, you know, it, it's okay to make mistakes. Like we, it's an old John Wooden and, and, and is, you know, the team that makes the most mistakes is going to win. We tell the guys that almost before every game, but we also, we also expand on that. We say, you know, guys, the team that makes the most mistakes normally wins because if you take care of these two things that I'm about to say is one of my old coaches who was a psychology major. I played at Nazareth college, Scott Nelson, great, great lacrosse mind um, and great psychology guy. He, he always talked about, and I use it for the last 26, 27 years is making errors of commission versus making errors of omission. So mistakes are okay. As long as you're trying to make something happen, you know? Um, and then the other piece of that we tell the guys is, if you make an error of commission, that's okay. As long as you recover twice as fast from your mistake. So, you know, in our game, riding the ball, uh, you know, you know, floor checking in hockey, whatever it's called, um, you know, is, is important. You miss a shot. It's going to happen in our game, you know, but getting it back is, you know, is, you know, just as important in our game. So, you know, most shots are missed in the sport of lacrosse, you know, and, and you know, and, and the best team shoot, 40%. And that's unbelievable. That means 60% of the shots are missed. And what we want our guys to do is focus on, you know, recovering from any mistake, but make, make errors of commission instead of errors of omission. And, you know, and then, and then again, recover twice as fast from those mistakes. But that's our biggest challenge sometimes with the guys at Stevens at, at, in our program is they're not used to making mistakes. You know, they, they try to be perfect in everything they do, you know, and, and, you know, and, and that's, that's, you know, something that I don't think is realistic. And I think sometimes it may cause a little bit of negative self-talk talk, you know, that in their mind, if they don't succeed, 
in a perfect way, you know, which is almost impossible to do. They, they start telling themselves, you know, a narrative that's just not true, you know? And I think, Gene, I think of a story a couple of years ago and I would never mention the name. We had a student come in freshman who we had really excited about. Um, and he came in this time of year and said, coach, like, I'm going to stop playing lacrosse because I want to get a 4-0. And my assistants and I were like, well, that, that's pretty heavy stuff. Like he had, he had received, he got in four O his first semester. Um, he had a super bright kid. And we're like, you know, that's a lot of pressure to put on yourself. And that's not necessarily unreal. That's not necessarily realistic. And, and as we we're talking, we we're spending about a half an hour trying to convince him that, you know, it's okay not to get a four O it's okay. And we want him to get a four O and, and at a point in the conversation, you know, where we're for the first half an hour trying to ex explain to this young man that he's got value to us, we, we will help him any way we can, and we want him to really consider, you know, playing, it, halfway through the conversation, he just started saying, I can't, I can't do it, I can't do it, and I, I can't, I won't be able to do it. And it was like really interesting, halfway through the conversation, I went from trying to talk him into sticking around and playing to saying, you know what, you need to be done. And the reason why is not, not tough love was that self-talk. He had put himself in a situation where he was already saying he can't do it. He was convincing himself he can't do that. And one of my big mottos or big slogans is whether you believe you can or you can't, it's probably true. And you, you know, I didn't invent that. Obviously I've heard that, but um, and also your vibe really attracts your tribe, you know? So like, if you're thinking along those lines and you're already convincing yourself, you can't like within an hour of a conversation with this young man, we went from encouraging him to, it was going to be okay. Let's, let's keep you involved. Let's keep you going to 45 minutes later saying, you know what, it's time for us to part ways because in your head, you've said, I can't more times than I want anybody in a four-year career to say you can't, you said it in five minutes, you know? So I, I think those are the things that are our challenges. I think those are the things that we can continue to work on as a staff at Stevens, you know, with our team. And, and I think we've making great, you know, headway with that. You know, I think we're, you know, we're putting things in perspective for guys and, um, and, you know, I think this pandemic has helped that a little bit. Yeah, Definitely. And that's dealing with perfectionists. That's not an easy thing. I know that was my master's degree for sports psychology, perfectionism and anxiety in sports. And we found that athletes that were more perfectionistic obviously got more nervous. They did worse. So we're addressing that kind of thing all the time. And, and also, like you said, it's having that fixed mindset versus the growth mindset, right? If he's saying he can't do it, I'm just no good or I'm not good enough, then his mind is already closed. So before we even get into the mindset training, we got to address that fixed mindset. Yeah, that's a great point there. Yeah, no, no doubt. And that, and, you know, that's one of our things that we focus a lot on, you know, here and, and, you know, I, I just, you know, I want our guys to not be so trans transactional with their approach. You know, I want them, I want this to be an experience that's really transformational. And I, you know, I've, I've studied a lot of that stuff on my own 3D coaching, just kind of, you know, helping, you know, you know, young people kind of understand the first dimension of, of the game, which is obviously the fundamentals, the shooting, the defense, the, you know, the, the, you know, the important parts, the physical aspect. But, you know, that second and third dimension is really just enjoying the process and, and just loving what you're doing. And, and, and as I said, you know, have this gratitude to what you're doing and, and focus and and then the process really kind of becomes a lot more transformational it becomes a lot more fun it, it becomes a lot more of what you get to do compared to what you have to do I, you know, I, I read a lot of John Gordon stuff and you know John Gordon has a lacrosse background he's a Cornell grad and and uh and his daughter and my daughter played on an FCA national team together years ago. And I got to talking to him a little bit and I've read a lot of his books, but like that get to versus have to mentality is really something that we explain to our guys. Like, you know, this isn't something that you have to do. This is something that you get to do. And, and that's just so important, like really to kind of process that. And, 
and make lacrosse the best part of your day. And, you know, and in fact, that's part of our recruiting process at Stevens. And, you know, we're looking at film and we're looking at guys play live that celebrate, you know, their, their accomplishments on the field. You know, we, we don't want to recruit these guys that score a goal, or have a nice assist or, or throw a great check or make a great save. And just, you know, I'm not saying let's have a parade every time they do something good, but like show some emotion, show that you're having fun because those are the guys that we're going to, we're going to want to recruit, you know, and, and the guys that just enjoy what they're doing. We always say that, you know, besides the academic and the, you know, the athletic achievements of our recruits, we're, we're trying to find a guy that loves playing lacrosse and loves the idea of playing college lacrosse. And that that's important because it is a grind at times. And sometimes you have to do some things and you don't get to do them, you know, but we want our guys to enjoy that process and have fun with it. Yeah, definitely. And especially now during this COVID time, we get to play. That re- that point is really illustrated in our minds because we might not be able to play. And, and at different times, it was taken from us. So, you know, we see that could happen with an injury. That could happen with really anything that could, you know, that, that could throw a curveball at life. So knowing that we do get to play, we don't we don't have to. That's a big thing. Those those little word changes are huge. I'm going to send you a great document after this, Gene, that, that I think you really like for your athletes. That'll, yeah, it'll help awesome. with that. Small word changes make a big difference. Absolutely. And this pen, you had, you had it right. COVID and this pandemic is really, is really kind of putting us all really to test right now. Like when, when the dust settles here, you know, I said to my assistants, cause we have a roster right now that's 60 and that's pretty big, you know, and typically we're in that 48, 50 range, um, you know, and, and we have a big roster. And I said to my assistants, you know, that'll play out. You know, we're going to see, and I said to the guys on the team, like, if the first day we get back out on the practice field, say in February or March, whenever that is, you know, if it happens, if you guys aren't just foaming with excitement to be out there, um, then you probably should stop playing, you know. And and conversely, if you're looked at these last 12 months, this is the longest a lot of our guys have gone without playing competitive lacrosse. If you looked at this last 12 months and said, hey, you know what? I don't really miss it. It's not that big of a deal that I'm not playing. Then you're probably, you're probably going to be, you know, the guy that says, Hey, I'm done. And I do think that it's going to be a really strong group when the dust settles. Uh, It'll be a different looking group than the 60 we have. I'm sure, you know, we'll lose a percentage of guys, not, not that we want to, but just because people are putting things in perspective, they're really, this pandemic, this COVID situation is really help is going to really help people kind of gauge, you know, where they're at and the excitement they have around, you know, um, playing college athletic and college lacrosse, in, in my opinion. And, and I'm looking forward to the end product, um, you know, in, you know, and see how it kind of, you know, see how it kind of shakes out. I love it. Like you said, you want, athletes who are passionate not overly emotional but they want to be out there they look alive they're enjoying the sport that's so big yeah absolutely and and I, and I want them and we spend a lot of time talking about visualization too and like in goal setting and, and things like that and I want them to kind of visualize what that's going to look like come February you know I want them to um and we do this and and it's funny you know I, I was thinking about this the other day um, we had a co- coaches convention last week, virtual, and I was thinking about goal setting and we've done a lot of different things and I'll share some of that stuff with you, um, by email and you can take a look at it. And we, we've done a lot of different things over the years. And, and some years I, I regret to even say that we haven't done as much and, you know, and we set goals around, you know, pra- weeks of practice. What do we want to achieve in our practices? We do game goals. We do individual game goals. We do positional game goals. And one of the processes in the visualization is, as my point is, is, is to kind of take a look at the obstacles that are in your way and visualize those. Like, I, I really believe that, you know, we all have these obstacles that we're going to have to overcome, you know, and, and, and to visualize those, you know, as well as, as what your end goal is going to be is, is going to be good because I think then when those obstacles do, or if those obstacles do present themselves, it's not your first time really kind of attacking it. And so we're trying to talk to our guys a little bit about picturing playing, what it's going to look like, practices are going to change, you know, how we're going to, you know, 
you know, how we're going to, you know, move forward with all this stuff. You know, we, we, t- we say to the guys that the teams that deal with this time away and this, this pandemic uh, the best uh, and prepare themselves the best are the teams that are going to be great come this spring if we're able to play. So, but it's a process. So like you, you got to spend some time and we do this, you know, over the years, do spend them some time thinking about your goals. You know, you, you've heard the old saying, a goal without a plan is just a wish, you know, like we, we want to know your process. We want to know, you know, what the steps you're going to take. Everybody says, oh, I want to be a better shooter. Okay. Well, what are you going to do? And don't say shoot more because that's, that's not real specific because if you're a bad shooter and you're shooting more then you're, you're still going to be a bad shooter, you know? So you know, we want guys to really kind of evaluate. And I think our guys do a really good job of that because they are kind of forward thinkers. They are, you know, guys that kind of go through that process and, and think about the steps and that whether I want to be a better shooter means, you know, look at your form, watch film, you know, um, and then go out and shoot and correct some of those things. Then, you know, but just, just set a goal and say, I want to be a better shooter without a plan, you know, doesn't, doesn't make any kind of sense and and you know goal setting and visualizing obstacles are I think is important I think because if you think it's going to be a clear path to your goal then that's just naive and you know and and you know there are going to be stumbling blocks you know and and you know I think that I think that's kind of our focus when we when we set goals and we want guys to kind of visualize you know the process um and anything that may stand in their way. Yeah, so many great things you said right there about focusing on that process. And also what I like with visual, visualizing, a lot of people talk about just visualizing the success. Or I've heard Olympians talking about just, they would visualize getting the medal placed around their neck, shaking the person's hand, getting the wreath placed on their head at the Olympics, that kind of thing. And yeah, that's powerful. It's important to visualize what it's going to feel like in victory. It's also important to visualize what it's going to feel like, like you said, during adversity situations. So you've been in that situation mentally before you actually get there in competition. Also visualizing your ideal scenario and visualizing how you're going to feel right before you step out there to compete. So there's several different places that you want to visualize rather than just getting the medal around your neck. Absolutely. And that you're, you're absolutely right. There's such, it's such important. uh, There's so much importance to the visualization of the end goal. No doubt. Like you want, you want to see that picture you do. But I do think that in order to get to that too, and I, I've heard people say never in your visualization, should you miss a shot? And I, and I, and I'll disagree with that. I think that I, yeah. I think that you have to kind of play that game in your head. You know, I think you have to, from, from soup to notch, as they say, you know, go through that process of a game if you're actually visualizing and it should be um, something that you spend time you know, doing and, and, and it's not just a quick close my eyes and do that. I, I, I have, a, I have two children. And my daughter is a, a senior college lacrosse player at, at Wagner um, college. And, you know, and, and, you know, her and I have talked a lot over her career. She was two-time high school American. And I, I talked to her a little bit about, you know, visualizing a game, you know, and, and, and my son's a two sport athlete at Montclair state, um, you know, and, and, same deal with him. You know, he, in order to do two sports in college is going to be very difficult. Like you have to really kind of process what that's going to look like um, from sport to sport. And, you know, I think my children have done a good job better than I did when I was their age, you know, of, of kind of processing that. And, and I only mention that because I believe in it so much that I talk to my own children about it. You know, I, I mean, it's a, you know, my pride and joys, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm giving them advice that I'm giving to my players because, you know, I love my players and I want to see them, you know, succeed as well, you know? So, um, you know, I, I think that, I think that that visualization from, from start to finish is so important, you know, and, and it's okay to visualize that, that end goal, that positive end goal, but it's okay to have some obstacles and some, you know, uh, I don't want to use the word failures, but some obstacles or some setbacks in your visualization as well. I agree completely with that. I mean, I get it that every individual is a little bit different. So 
this this might you might have to shift your weight more for some personalities versus others but but by and large absolutely because you're going to miss sometimes and if you're not able to brush it off i mean that's usually what makes the difference between a champion and the and, and the average person i think it was like michael jordan or something like that who said he never missed a shot in his mind but maybe he but maybe he's already internalized that if he makes a mistake he just keeps playing forward like a lot of people aren't naturally wired that way or even if he wasn't naturally wired that way, maybe he picked that up over time, or maybe it was something Phil Jackson or one of his other coaches said to him, but yeah, each athlete's a little bit different and you have to deal with you. You got to deal with those adversity situations. Otherwise those are the things that'll derail you. No doubt about it. No doubt about it. One more thing I wanted to get your feedback on. So with lacrosse players, we have, you've probably seen our mindset red flag. So some of the biggest mental mistakes that people struggle with, I just wanted to get your feedback on what are some of the things you see with these athletes, is that popping up the red flag? I do. I see it. Yes. Yep. Um, yeah. You have to I mean, go through each one. Just your overall impressions. Yeah. No. I think these are all really good. You know. Um, you know. I, I I do believe that the the first one kind of hits home. I I think mm-hmm. that sometimes guys are so systematic in what they do that they feel like it has to be a very straight path to get to their end goal and. They don't want to veer off that path. And, and you know, we, we always say, you know, um, you know, the risk equals the reward. You know, I, you know, you have to take some chances. You have to, you know, spend some time doing some things a little bit differently. You know, it's OK to make that mistake. And again, you, you may talk to one of my guys and say, well, coach or, or, or you know, Gene, like I'm afraid to go out there and make a mistake because, you know, I I don't want to get pulled or, you know, and I'm not saying that our guys don't think that way, but we as coaches are telling them, go ahead. You know, we're not, we're not harping on mistakes again, making errors of commission versus errors of omission. Like we want you basically that is right there in definition, you know, go ahead and, and, and take chances, make something happen. You know um, you know, I do believe that you know, letting teammates down is something that the guys worry about, but I I think about, you know, almost letting themselves or their family down. Like I I do think that the guys kind of approach it that way. You know, they want to try to be perfect and, and back to that, you know, perfect mentality, which is kind of scary and, and, and very vanilla. I mean, I think if you try to be one foot in front of the other, you know, work perfect, walk in a perfect straight line, then, you know, you're going to have some stumbles along the, along the way, and you're probably going to fall off that line. So you got to figure out a way to kind of get back. But, um, you know, I, I think that, I think the, the missing the slide on defense is exactly what we talk a lot about on in, in lacrosse on, on the defensive end is, and that's where this error of commission versus error of omission. I was a defenseman in college and, and I remember my college coach, Scott Nelson, who I mentioned earlier, used to say that all the time to us is like, go slide. Like I would rather you slide and have too many guys sliding than have nobody slide. Like at, at that point, you know, we want you to make a decision, you know, and, 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 and process it and, and be, be aggressive and have that men- aggressive mentality. And if we get burnt, then so be it. Like, you know, at the end of the day, you know, that's going to happen. There hasn't been a lot of shutout lacrosse games ever in the history. And, you know, and, and I think that it's important really to, you know, be okay with that type of failure, you know, defense in lacrosse or offense in lacrosse is certainly not perfect. You know, how many times in a lacrosse game, do you see a goal and I'll look at my offensive coordinator and say, wow, that's not quite how we drew it up, you know, but like things happen, balls trickle out, you know, you know, balls, you know, wind up trickling in, you know, I mean, it, it, at the end of the day, it's a, you know, it's a game of inches and, and things aren't going to go as, you know, as mechanically planned. You know, I, we had a defenseman who was years ago, maybe eight, nine years ago now, who was engineering student of the year in New Jersey, beat out kids from Princeton and Rutgers, um, you know, and he once said to me, coach, we're doing a defensive, uh, you know, positional work. And he's like, what about the fifth slide? And I said, I said to the student, I won't mention his name because I wouldn't want to embarrass him. I said, a fifth slide. I'll tell you what. I said, if we need a fifth slide, throw the ball on our own goal and let's just face it off. Like, I mean, you know, they sometimes, they sometimes think about steps four and five when 
it probably will never get to that, you know, but so sometimes I think thinking too much then almost becomes, you almost become paralyzed by that type of mental analysis, you know, it's a, you know, you know, paralysis by analysis. Like I think sometimes I think that stuff is dangerous, especially when you're dealing with very high end engineers or very high end math and science people, you know, like the STEM people, like we deal with, and you know, that there's always an equation that should work, you know, sometimes, it doesn't work in our sport. And most of the times it doesn't work the way we necessarily plan, you know? So, you know, I, I think, I think that slide you showed was really, you know, really, you know, spot on with a lot of issues and, and we want our guys to just kind of enjoy it. And, and, you know, and we want them to play with a passion. You know, someone asked me once in recruiting, like, what are you looking for? There's two types of recruits I look for. It's the blue chip and the shoulder chip. And, you know, and, and the shoulder chip guys have been great. You know, I've, I've coached 75 plus all Americans in my career. Um, and most of those guys are shoulder chip guys, something to prove something to, you know, someone along the line told them that they weren't quite where they needed to be, or they weren't going to be successful. And I love those guys. And I love those guys with stories. We had a, a guy graduated, and again, I won't mention his name, who admissions was a little bit concerned about taking, you know, because maybe he wasn't up to what we normally were were um, looking for. And and the kid wound up being player of the year in the conference twice. He wound up being a three-time All-American, and he wound up ending his career as an academic All-American. And oh, by the way, he's in, he's in, pre, he's in med school right now in a program. So that is someone that eight years ago when he was going through the process, people around, you know, me were saying, I don't know if he could be successful. I was like, yeah, watch. And, you know, and I knew a little bit of background of the student and he dealt with adversity while his, his time during it, his Stevens. Um, and, and I, I just, I'm so proud of those guys. You know, he was athletically, you know, a great player in high school, but academically people weren't giving him a chance. And, he took that with a, he put that chip right on his shoulder and said, I'm going to prove everybody wrong. And those are the guys that I've made a career out of, you know, I, I'll tell you that, you know, that kind of process and that type of motivation, you know, when I want to prove to everybody, you know, um, you know, it, it's so, it's so powerful, you know, and I, I, I rather a lot of those guys than the, than the high school Americans, you know, I mean, you know, the high school Americans sometimes think, and I tell my daughter this all the time, they think that they have it all figured out. You know, it's sometimes they don't have a growth mindset. You know, they, they think they they've already grown and they've reached the pinnacle. And, you know, we've had a good amount of high school Americans in, in all the programs I've coached. And, you know, some of those guys don't want to play in a whole lot for us, you know, because they're not willing to grow, you know, and, and, and the guys that weren't anything, you know, you, you look at the, the football, you know, recruiting the, the four stars, the three stars, I love to watch Russell Wilson, who's probably going to be the MVP in the NFL. He was a one or two star guy, you know, the, the, the JJ Watts of the world, you know, those guys weren't, you know, four star, five star, you know, football recruits, you know, and I just love that. And I just, I love that underdog um, mentality. I love that something to prove mentality. And I think, I think part of that is the slide you showed is, is going out and taking chances and, and, and doing what you can to be different and to be, you know, not common, you know, and, and I think, I think to be, you know, different in a, in a positive way, in a unique way, be unique is, I guess, the word I'm looking for, but, but also, you know, motivate yourself to be great. That's awesome. So many great gold, gold nuggets of information there, Gene. I really appreciate it. Excellent. No, it's, it's awesome. I, I appreciate talking about this stuff. I, I, I did, as I said earlier, I, I feel like my career has been like a little bit of a roller coaster, you know, with goal setting and mindset stuff, I think. And it's funny because I'm sitting here talking about being competitive. And listen, you know, I, I've, I've coached a lot of, you know, a lot of wins in my career, but, you know, and no one, no one dislikes losing more than I do. I hate it. Um, but sometimes I lose sight of, you know, the importance of goal setting and, and, and this is, and I'm, and I'm so glad to talk to you today because last week 
I'd watch a couple of speakers and I said, you know what? We used to do a really good job of that. And in the last handful of years, we've had some great teams and we haven't done as good of a job of that, you know, and, and, you know, I want to get back to doing that because it's so important, especially now with really not being able to do anything and, and, and have some physical, you know, interactions with our guys. This is a, the best time that to, to focus on the mental aspects. And I think this is the time, you know, to do that. And, and plus it's worked from, from my programs over the years, you know, so why, why not do something that's going to work? And, and, you know, so, you know, we've really kind of dust, you know, dusted off some of the things that we used to do. Um, you know, we haven't done in the last handful of years and we're, we're really going to part, start putting those things back into, into motion, you know, and uh, I'm really excited to kind of see how, how it all works out. And, 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 you know, talking to you really kind of, kind of affirms and confirms a lot of the things that, you know, we're, we're thinking about and, and moving forward here. Definitely. It's one of those things that it's easy to do, but anything that's easy to do is easy not to do. And sometimes we start having that success and we say, okay, I have this under control. Let me focus on these other things. And then we forget what we were doing to be successful. I've experienced that as an athlete and I've seen that with many of the athletes that we coach. So it's, it's great information. Thanks a lot again, Gene. I really appreciate it. Yeah, no, I appreciate your time and, and, and thanks for having me on again and, and best to you. And I look forward to, you know, future conversations with you and, and uh, you know, and I really appreciate all the work you're doing and, 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 you know, and, and great, you know, a great uh, product and, you know, I enjoy the podcast and, and I'm, I'm glad to be a part of one. Thank you. Absolutely. Great stuff. Take care. All right. See you coach.